Okay, we're going to get ready to roll here. We got a couple of guests here, authoritative food figures for Italian cuisine, starting off with Pasquale Martinelli, who's considered one of the pioneers of Italian cooking here uh, in New York City right now. We also have Louis Sachs here, front of the house, talking a little bit about uh, what it takes to deal with people uh, in the restaurant business, uh, not in the kitchen, but in the front, which is also an art in itself. Gentlemen, thank you for, uh, for coming on the show, both of you. So what, let's start off a little bit by, uh, Pasquale, talk, talk to us a little bit about what kind of food means to you, because you're an eccentric chef. You're the type of guy that's not going to go into a supermarket. You'll actually drive to a farm and get your food, blue eggs, stuff like that, you know, your farm to table. You're very involved with that type of, of, of food picking, so to speak, right? Because a lot of chefs are like, okay, I'll go to Baldor's, I'll get my stuff, I'll go to Cisco, get my stuff. But right. you have a different philosophy. You're like, I'm going right to the farm. You know, I'm talking with the farmer. Right. We're going to talk about growing something that, that might take two or three or, two, or months to grow. Uh, talk to me a little bit about yourself here. Uh, well, this uh, philosophy, my philosophy of cooking is very much related to the way I grew up in, uh, in, in Italy. Um, I grew up... Uh, uh, 100 mi 150 miles away from where the Mediterranean diet was first started in 19, at the end of the 1940s by Dr. Ansel Keys. Mm -hmm. Let's make clear that diet does not mean uh, a food regime, but it actually comes from the, the, the ancient word, from the Greek ancient word, dietia, which actually translates into lifestyle, way of life. That said, that said, uh, food is a part of the way of life, and part of getting the food is walking from one place, a destination back in Italy. Mm. So we walk into town. Let me go up to Louis. You know, I know he's a he's a farmer. I know, I know he does news uh, any pesticides. Mm. You know, I know to uh, uh, Joe the butcher. Uh, Third generation butcher. They they have their own animals. They they I know then I was based in the farm and then uh, and then the eggs, the milk, the cheese, and then the fish market where we see the boats coming every day Monday to Friday. Mm. So everything is in season, uh, and then so so this work the work that I'm talking about was the work of uh, back then of uh, of the um, Casalinga. La Casalinga was the the, the mom that was home while the, the father would go work, so she would take care of the home, which was a, a work itself, right? Mm. But having time to cook at home, having time to go and actually shop. So now think of this. You are shopping and you are getting, touching, seeing the ingredients. As you see the ingredients, they tell you how you want, how they want to be prepared. Right. Uh, as we walk, we socialize. Joe, how's your, how's your dog? I haven't seen your dog in a long time, right? right. right? Oh, yeah, no, he's, he's, he's fine. So how's your dog? I know your daughter graduated a year ago by, years right, go right. by, you know? So you so have that create, relationship that you're building with the farmer, right? We create a community. Hey, by the way, my, my daughter just finished the school. Do you think she can come and help you? Yeah, please. Come yeah, yeah. Doing for you. Right. So this whole idea, in between, there is food. Right. But what kind of food there is in between? Because I know exactly where it's coming from. So that same idea, I try to do it in New York as much as I can because obviously the distances are right, not right, the same, right. right? So as we do this, as we do this, as we move around, as we go up and down the stairs because we are drying the oregano, mm -hmm. as we, we, we go a bit wide oregano as a way of uh, jogging almost. Joe, it's springtime. You want to go for a, for a jog, put a bag with you. Mm. As we're jogging, there's some yeah, So you're living off the land, right? And I think that that's the big thing with chefs, like true chefs. Uh, I'm not talking about the person who just graduated CIA and, and thinks buying a, a, a can of hollandaise sauce from Cisco is the way to go. But true chefs that go to the farms, meet with the farmers, develop those relationships over the years. Because at the end of the day, those farmers are going to make you look good, too. But right? hey, uh they are. We are nobody. And that's why I didn't want to come with, that, with my uniform today. Right. I don't want to be seen as a chef. Mm -hmm. We need to, to. We need to swap this perception. Mm -hmm. Okay. We. I. In my view. 
talking about myself. I think we need to stop uh, looking at our food in, in the mood. It has to be perfect. Like, uh, I don't believe that the food, we need, we eat the food with our, with our eyes. I don't believe in that. Mm -hmm. Because in order to do that, we have to focus on making the, the, the food super beautiful. Right. In the meantime, in the meantime, we need to to apply to apply all different type of processes mm -hmm. to it, so we can make a foam out, out of a parmesan, right? right? So to speaking, but the parmesan's been there aging. The one that had it's four four years old. And where is that? Can you show us right yeah. now? That the one that had it's four years old. What is it? Four-year-old Four. Parmesan. Most people don't have the patience to sit and watch something grow for two two weeks. <laughs> and Chef is also uh, cooking some incredible food here today that uh, Lewis and I is going to have the absolute pleasure of tasting. I mean, it smells delightful. Yeah, definitely. Food. Definitely. How are we doing back there, Chef? Good. Looking good? So this is the, uh, yeah, the Parmesan. Four, four years old. Four years. Forty-eight months, right? Beautiful. Now, Chef, would you recommend uh, a slice of Parmesan or maybe with some super salad? We go first of all uh, terminology. We go slice Parmesan. Or we do we 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 cut into chunks. Mm. We don't slice Parmesan. Or we cut into chunks. No cherry Parmesan. This is how you do it. And it's got those crystals in there with well, those calcium crystals, yeah. right? Yeah. Look, look at the wow, this is really and good. the color, you know, very powerful, you know. So, do you think four year aged uh, mm -hmm. cheese in this particular the brand is the year to go? What, what if it was aged six years? Would six okay. years be good? The aging, the aging part, it's uh, very similar, not the same, very similar to to the fermentation process into bread, mm -hmm. fermentation process into wine, uh, where where the work, the work has been made by the bacteria, mm -hmm. the good, the bad, the ones that we right. want. So these bacteria is work in a way of either the good and the bad, some, some they, they need to eat. Yeah, because, I mean, look, a lot of people who may not know food, and because they don't know food, it's only because they're not educated, right? If, if, we, if you had somebody to educate you and say to yourself, buying American cheese in a packet with plastic that's filled with hydrogenated oils and coloring and crap, they think that's cheese, yet you bring us this incredible Parmigiano-Reggiano cheese. Is it Parmigiano-Reggiano? Parmigiano-Reggiano. Parmigiano-Reggiano. Months. That's aged and cultivated for four years with calcium crystals. Every time you bite it, you get that pop, that flavor. Um, it's night and day, night and day. I mean, you can't you can't call that cheese, um, you know. And and I think that that's the difference in food with with every level is educating the consumer. Um, you know, would that person who thought, hey, you know what, I want a cheap meal today, it, that cheese is only five five dollars. But if you sat him down and you told him what was in it, and then you said, well, this is going to be, you know. Twenty-one dollars a pound. They, they would get, remember they, the cheese. They, they would be crazy. The yeah, they would. They would look at you like you're nuts. But if they tasted it and they were educated, they might accept it and they'd be willing to pay that price. Absolutely, absolutely, hundred percent, hundred percent. If they same thing with meat, same thing with the olive oil, same thing with wine, anything. Uh, the idea. That's why I don't want to be. I don't like to be. I don't like to to cover the figure as a chef. Mm -hmm. I like to cover the finger as someone who's sharing. Uh, in my case, my, my culinary cultural heritage, um, and I like to go to a restaurant and be then Hopefully, I find some people who who try to share with pride, right? Exactly, call it and sure. with pride. it doesn't matter to me if you're a chef, you went to culinary school, uh, with all respect, that's it, right? It doesn't matter to me, right? Your with culture, someone exactly. with the person who told me how to make bread is a police officer in Italy. Mm. Yeah, and right. he knows more than any human being. That's right. You know? I traveled all over Mexico, and I ended up in a small town. The tacos in this small town—they had chickens hanging in, in in hot heat. There was no refrigeration. Other best taco I ever had in my life. You know, but that's that's kind of what you know what you have.
No, people may have never seen a blue egg before. Yeah, I'll talk about it. Yeah, let's talk about this blue egg. And uh, before we do the blue egg, tell me a little bit about you know what it takes to run the front of a house of a restaurant, right? Well, hey, you need a great chef, but you also need a great orchestra. You need a maestro that, to orchestrate those pain in the asses that are out there. Well, right and back off, uh, writing on what the chef was saying, um, it's all. Uh, it's it's look at the way we were we grew up on. Um, once you go to a dining room, there's there's a set out there. There's a set, there's a dining set, and everybody plays a part. You have a butter knife, you have a steak knife, you have your bread knife, you have a fork, you have a dessert fork, you have a ensalada fork. You know what I mean? So everybody plays their own part. So everything from the farm to the man who makes the meal, to the people that actually serve the meal, it's um, it's profound and it goes. One hand in hand, one with each other. You know. Um, now, do you get any? Do you, do you get a lot of pain in the asses that might come to a restaurant and just not know a meal or not appreciate your service or good wine? Um, you always get your riffraff that come in and out, but um, the ones that usually come back are the ones that actually get nostalgia or get a memory every time they take a bite out of a meal. Right. Every time they get a service out of a meal, you know. Um, one thing I've noticed is that, and, and going off of what you said, so when you take a bite of that Parmesan, does it bring you back to your childhood? Does it bring you back to when you were younger? In, in my case, in my case, yes. But the question is, how do we make this happen? Same experience to those who did not experience the same childhood that I did. But, and how do you do that? How, how do you, you know, you and I grew up, you probably too around this this food, um, but let's say someone has been eating at Walmart their whole life. Right? How do you convince them that you know we can bring this experience to them because they really are missing out? But how do you bring that experience? It comes. To them? It comes. If I may, yeah. If it comes from setting setting up some standard in the dining room, in the dining room, uh, people in the dining room are the most important people they are more important than my work. We, I, I, my, 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 my um, career began in the uh, I worked in England, in Italy, and uh, cruise liner, and then I came to New York. Now, currently, I am enrolled in a, in a course to become a, an integrative uh, nutrition health coach in mm -hmm. New York. I'm gonna graduate in March, right? That I always thought the service was the most important thing before my, my work as a chef. And I was a bellboy as well. I wanted to learn all, a bartender too, I was a bartender. Think of this, this, this to answer your question. I make the best filet mignon in the world. Let's just say, okay? Mm. Okay, now we are leaving, you and your wife are leaving for a weekend. You're gonna go to this hotel, okay, where there's this chef that's known to make the best filet mignon in the world, correct? Mm. We travel, we drive, we get to the parking lot, okay? And then we pull the, 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 the luggage out of the car and the bellboy decides not to take your shoes from the floor because mm. I don't want to take your shoes for whatever reason. Right. So he gives you an attitude. I'm not taking the shoes. Sorry, right. I'm not taking this. Okay, fine. Now, our expectations are by your wife, right. are already lowering. Correct. We didn't even get to the wrestle yet. Exactly right. We, okay, fine, but we forgive. Mm -hmm. We forgive, but doesn't go, we don't forget. Right. We go to the to the main lobby, blah, blah, blah. we go to the bar, okay, I ask for this, actually, I'll drink only sparkling water, mm -hmm. okay? I ask for sparkling water, I don't drink alcohol. I ask for sparkling water, and they pour me uh, a room temperature tap water, okay? It might sound, it might sound, what's the big deal to you? Mm -hmm. This is the only thing I drink, and I want mm -hmm. my water to be the way I want it. If mm -hmm. you charge me 15 bucks, right? Yeah, of they course, charge 50 of course, bucks? absolutely. Okay, I want my water the right. way I want it. Because right. that, that bottle of water costs 50 cents, right? So now, okay, bam, the bad boy, the bartender. And and I'm here to taste you my filet mignon. But I ain't done there yet. Right. I get my filet mignon, right? And I ask for rare, and it got even rare, right? Mm. Okay? I had enough. Right. I had enough. But watch this the other way. You wait the filet mignon, right. okay? Yeah. I come, the bartender, absolutely. The bartender, here, nice, beautiful, chilled. 
Ah, the way I won my mm. award. I got to look at the restaurant and got my, my filet mignon. I ordered rare. But it has medium rare. Don't worry, buddy. Don't yeah. worry. It's okay. A new one. See how everything changes? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Absolutely. Exactly right. So, and that would be your job. Your job would be yeah, to step in services and say, hey, you know what? You've had a bad experience, you know. But we have to start from that's why you right. can't you, we the old Okay, let's start this way. We don't sell in my view. I don't sell food, the bartender doesn't sell drinks, the reception doesn't sell rooms. Okay. Each one of us we only sell one product, <laughs> hospitality. Mm -hmm. Experience, our, yes. Our, we sell, our product is hospitality. It's not tangible, but it's absolutely important. In nutrition, <laughs> in nutrition, integrative nutrition, it is called primary food, our emotions, and, and or food off the plate, mm. off the plate. Secondary food, it's food on the plate. Do you understand primary right. before self? Secondary food, the food that we eat is less important than our emotions. Mm. How do we change people? We they are babies. Mm. We have to hand by hand. Exactly. Absolutely. And, and be willing, be willing to invest. I'm not eating this cheese. Okay, this is the cheese that you like. Left time at ten. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Because once the food reaches your mouth. At that point, then you can't go back. Passes, exactly. Yeah, you can't go back to that crap hygienic exactly. food. So let's have the courage. Okay. Let's have the courage. Let's how I, our idea, our idea, my idea, my my mission is to 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 change something, right? All right. Okay. I have to be ready to invest. Invest in changing, not in non investing that I give you this and give me the money. It might mean it might mean that I give you this, I don't want nothing back. But what what I what I would like to see that that you see the difference. Right. You know, you 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 hit the nose on the head. I years ago I had opened up a restaurant and uh, Sierra Maccioni, who was a very good friend of mine, I went there and asked him what he thought of the concept. And he said, Well, you know, what's gonna be the draw of the people? You know, they're not just gonna they might come on, you know, based on your name, but what what are you gonna do to get them to stay? And he told me that the, the, the reason why Le Cirque is so successful is because when they come in from the very beginning of Le Cirque, the way they're greeted, that whole atmosphere leading them up to the meal, they're already hooked. So, yes, yeah, so it's, it's exactly what you were saying. So get them hooked in the beginning, even before they try the food. Once they try the food and then when they're impressed, complete. That, that is just it's word of mouth is going to go crazy. And that's the secret to the restaurant business. And a lot of chefs make that mistake. And I was about to make it, too. Had I not had that, that conversation with him, I thought good food enough no. and reputation and PR no. would have been enough I don't to care. bring the food. food. Right. But, but like you know, and people make that mistake. I can care less. Yeah. Honestly, I go to a restaurant and let's not forget to, to the point of your, your work. Uh, who's making the difference? Okay. This is very, I think it's very easy, right? Louis is in the front of the house. You are in the back of the house or me, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but is representing you mm. in the same way, in right. the same way, uh, buyer makes Tylenol. Right. Okay. This Tylenol, you guys go and sell it. Okay. Now, okay, all those sales people, okay, they're going to be, they, it's going to be the phase of Tylenol. Mm -hmm. So it's what they tell the people that's going to make the difference. Right. But what they tell the people, it's up to us on top to train them properly. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why the chef and the front of the house absolutely have to work hand in hand. I mean, going off what you also said, you want to treat it like a child. So you, you want to be able to explain everything that's on your menu. Mm -hmm. You understand? So if they say, you want to be able to explain that it's, 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 Infused with squid oil, you understand, right. and that's why it becomes a, a black linguine. Well, should not be with the squid oil. This is the thing. This is the thing that you just eat. The 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 the. the well, I know exactly what you're talking about, and this mm. is where I'm sorry if I no, I, no, I, I, no, I like the idea of the squid ink, the squid oil, the squid oil. Beautiful, no? But this is where, this is where, uh, as Italians, we sold our culture, right? To use it, to use, because 
the whole story about the Squid Ink is because when we, you, we, if we are going to the market and wait for the boat, okay, we're gonna get the fresh right, octopus, get the fresh right? seafood. The fresh octopus, it, mm -hmm. you know, you right. know, fresh fish, right? Sure. It's dirty. Yep. And we have to clean it. But today we call the company. We get rings of calamari, mm -hmm. not tentacles. Right. Clean Raised in China. Uh, Right. Most of the time. But I'm saying to you, by the yeah. time we get that that, that, that that thing, what we are eating with calamari, right. it's the crispness of the frying. Yeah. Like, and it's no they don't get it. It. So I, I was in Palermo for two weeks, and I would wait at the, the, the docks. The fishermen would come in these little boats, very small boats, exactly. with, with a ton of fish still moving. I never seen anything so incredible in my life. And then they would sell it at the Palermo market. There's a big market over there in Palermo. And they would sell all the fresh food and seafood. But you have to clean it. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to clean it. Oh, yeah, it's, it's whole. It, it, they just catch it for you. You get to do the rest. But now yeah. we go back to sustainability. Right. Sustainability means I got the octopus, I got ink, the squid ink, the, the, the suck. Yeah. The suck, right? Octopus, octopus, the suck, right? Yeah. Okay, we take the suck. As soon as you pinch it, it all becomes black. You have to be careful how to remove it, right? Yes. Okay, what can you possibly do with something like that? This is the geniality of the time. Right. This is the real cuisine, right. no? We make pasta out of it. Absolutely. Dough. So, spaghetti, squid ink, it's not the pasta black. We see the pasta is black here. Mm. It's not. You make pasta, normal pasta, top notch wheat. What you see black, it's the pasta that may be yellow or blue, that turn black with the real squid ink. Yeah. We are getting pasta processed here with some fake squid. Yeah, crap. And we lost yeah. it. We it's, only yeah. see exactly. so Some people never had it. Man, <laughs> That's it's, so, it's, it's, it's good for you to know I was prepared as well because there's but people that have allergens. I mean, all this goes in hand in hand as well. Yeah, but yes. the, 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 the crap but that I they're putting in But I can see you, food. Luis, yeah. preparing this for you. You are getting very excited about it, you know. I can see you. you and this is a perfect thing to say, that back to what you were saying, be, be, between the front of the house. For years, there's been a battle in a lot of restaurants. Now, not the more fine dining restaurants that, that have the notion that everybody's a team. But, you know, many restaurants look at, ah, that waiter or that waitress, that maitre d', and it, there's like a struggle. And everybody knows it. There's a front of the house struggle, back of the house struggle. But only the smart people that work in, in unison, you know, together realize that there's a general experience here you know it's not just uh the front of the house is 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 ass and they didn't pick up or or they didn't sell the steak the right way or sell the special uh in my opinion one of the first people i thought in in my career that always pulled the front of the house and the back house was Ciro Maccioni and i learned his style of incorporating just everything that we're talking here to, to really get to that level, because I think that if, if the front of the house is not on page with the chef, or they just think they can hire some random chef, oh, to put an ad on, no, if you're doing a certain type of food, you better get the right manager, and you better get the right chef, because that is an art to find them both. Absolutely. Don't just think you're going to get somebody that graduated culinary school, and I got a front of the house guy or gal who doesn't mind closing uh, at 12 o'clock every night, and you think that that's a good marriage. You know, you set yourself up for, for failure. It's the hard part of a restaurant business isn't getting the people in. It's getting them in and keeping them. So if they don't have that overall experience in the beginning, they're not coming back. Listen, Romans, Romans, ancient Rome, they used hospitality to conquer. It's a true story. They used right. hospitality principle for the Greeks, for the Greeks. A foreigner, a foreigner, what's this? A foreigner was a divine figure. We are in town, right? We see someone, we know a little town, we don't, we don't know this person. I park with a car, whatever, okay? And he's asking for information. We don't, we know, we perceive he's not from here. Right. Okay, the same same thing in, in the, during that Asian Greeks. When they saw that, okay, it was a divine figure and they had to do anything possible to help the person because otherwise something bad will come from the sky. Mm. So they had to do anything possible. Watch this. Be afraid of something that was going to happen to you. You didn't look. If it was a lawyer, 
if he was a dishwasher, right. if he, he was from uh, exactly. Italy, Japan, China, Mexico, it didn't matter. The guy was a foreigner. Mm -hmm. So if we take these principles and bring it to not only restaurant, hairdresser, mechanic, mm -hmm. anywhere we go, anywhere we go, finish what, what begins a relationship between client and seller. Yeah. Okay. Because because technically, if I come here, if I come to you for my my hair, right? Okay. But maybe you are the expert. Right. Same thing with the food. If I sit down and you come towards, you are the expert. Okay. And I before I cannot get to the chef, right? Mm. So he's representing the chef. Absolutely. However, right. however, however, I don't believe. I don't believe that the chef should be locked up in the kitchen. Mm. I believe this is the home of the chef and the home of Luis. You all should come out. This is why I founded my company. Mm. Because what I now, what is that company uh, for people that want to know more about you? What what, what is the company? A, where you're at? How could they get in touch with you? Uh, Aloro A L L O R O. New York Prima Dining. Mm -hmm. I bring over experiences. And speaking of experiences, we got a blue egg here. Many people have never seen a blue egg before. Yeah, there's now a farm of a house. There's a farm. But see, I go there, I find whatever I find, five, six eggs. Right. Then I walk 20 blocks. But I use it as my exercise. Right, right. As well. Exactly. Then I think my car goes to the city at Park on 23rd Street and I go to New York Square Farmers Market. Exactly. Four o'clock in the morning. And you get the blue egg. Right, two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> two o'clock in the morning. I yeah. have a meeting with a farm. But Luis, but if you and me work together, okay, you'll be coming with me 100%. Getting paid. Two I am paying the market. people. Yeah. Awesome. You want to learn. You want to know where it's coming no, from. No, no. You, you asked me before, how would we trust me to, to the clients? Mm. He has to start from me first, then me, I have to give to the people around me, and they have to give to the people. There yeah. is no, uh, there is no, we can't skip this path, this right. step. Therefore, therefore, it's very important for me, but more important for the guest, that we know as much as possible. Mm. We know as much as possible. And above all, okay, when you, I say, when we talk to people, let's, let's, Let's take off our, our jacket. Let's take off our hat. Let's take off our title. Okay. And let's go down to the neck and be exactly. Yeah, okay, get down to it. Yeah, exactly. What do you have here, chef? Now, this is, this is interesting. Okay, so this is called the focaccia barise. Very important, the focaccia barise, because this was our snack after school. But watch, watch, I'll tell you. So uh, I make my own wheat back in Italy, right? My my own flour, okay. Um, it's a, a, a semola. It's a wheat. Uh, Puglia is known for dur wheat. Mm -hmm. The start is hotter, right? So packed with fiber, kind of minerals, and and every type of uh, um, mm -hmm. the be benefits and nutritional benefits. Okay, so the flour itself, right? Uh, now we use olive oil, olive oil, organic olive oil. We know the baker because my school is here. I know we're like at home. We're going to pass by Joe's Bakery, you know, mm. four generational type of yep. thing, you know. These people don't have uh, uh, hundreds of acres of land. Right. They do that. They, they produce and they use for the bakery. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say, I'm not eating a piece of food. I'm eating, I'm taking a, a medicine. Literally, because our oregano is my own oregano, my mom makes it mm. because in the summer the top is organic to me. So, you can see, you I should right. I show you okay. This is not food, this is a medicine. Mm. Okay, I know we look at food, okay. The color of food, color of food, uh, and the shape of food are very much related to, to our body. Tomatoes, which on um. Um, lycopene, okay, mm -hmm. which which is supports cardiovascular benefits. If we do cut a tomato, okay, the tomato has four departments. Look, one, two, 
three and four, correct? Right. One, two, three, and four. If we cut a heart, it has four departments, same exact thing. It is the same color of the heart, and it supports it supports the heart benefits, the tomatoes. Olives, olives, they look like an ovary, a female ovary. Okay, if we look at take a bit, Google it. Okay, the 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 um, olives, one of the benefits is um, um, polyphenolics, right? Mm. Polyphenolic support um, support uh, uh, um, the uh, energy of the eggs, so mm. to proliferate. Okay, so they look like the color is almost the same. Okay, so a lot of food. If we take a celery stack, okay, the celery, the, the benefits of celery to support our bones, right? Okay, right. if we take a celery stack, we put, it looks like a bone. Mm. So everything is related to the to shape food. of a food. So yeah. the, nobody, to not everything, but a lot. Most what I'm trying it. to say with this is that we need to look at food as our medicine and not only as a pleasure. We're just going back to what you were saying about Getting something from a Walmart, exactly uh, same thing. Right. Bar, it's it's a, well, exactly. no shape, no color. Well, if you, yeah, you look at somebody that. who's five hundred pounds; they're eating for pleasure. That's most made of the time. time. <laughs> 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 no, they don't have. Yeah, we got to try no, to educate them. Watch the show. We are lucky. I think that yeah. we come from a, I have an heritage. Stay or off the potato from, chips. We are lucky. You know, right, those, yeah. those, those guys. Are, I used to drink alcohol a lot, right? I was I was an alcoholic, right, up until two thousand fifteen. Uh, but if we see someone drunk, you know, uh, the first thing, the first reaction, we judge the person. When I see someone drunk, when I see someone obese, I would do have these people. Mm. It's not his fault, this guy. Right, the they, they don't know, they just don't have the knowledge. Let's be honest. Yeah, it's the same same thing like a restaurateur. I want to open up a restaurant, but you're not knowledgeable to succeed. Exactly. It's, it's, it's everything. You just have to. The question is, how do you educate them and how does it sink in? Because you could give everybody the knowledge, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to hit. Coming to the front of the house, same. Uh, uh, they have to educate the clients, the, the guests coming yeah. in. Where's our phone, Luis? Luis, different bambini, Luis. All right. So this is going down. Focaccia la Paris. And this is. Uh, did you say this was uh, sourdough? Sourdough, my yeah. own sourdough. Yeah. Wow. Don't be careful, the pig. Wow. So this so was. Best. So we are not. No cheese. No, a question. Right. We are not getting. That's right. This is designed, designed to support and sustain our body for our body function. But think about it. You're eating something that's supporting your body function and it's also delicious and it's also beneficial for you Can, do you understand the geniality of the italian people yeah. the italian culture you know we very little but a high level right we can combine so many so we don't need two three four slices because this is in the afternoon right and let's not forget we don't have dinners we don't we skip dinners right. we might have a piece of cheese or a piece of salami but the salami is from the guy who, right, exactly. who raises his own pork no sodium, no, no, no artificial agents. Okay. Fat, 11 grams of 11 calories per gram. Carbs and protein, 7 calories per gram. Therefore, at night when we eat a piece of cheese and a piece of salami, although they're, they're small, but they're much more p powerful. But so powerful, we only need a couple of slices, exactly what we need. Right. Now, what else do you have here, Chef? You have something okay, else with bread down there. Hang on. I need a little. Everything is related to food. Mm -hmm. And everything is related to people. And back and forth. Food the people, food the people. So, um, every season, I see this, this, this tomatoes here. Okay, this become the tomatoes for the winter. 
we had them on the wall in our own home. Mm. But so we don't take the car and go to stop and buy tomatoes. We had them from the summer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We cure our own tomatoes in the winter. We ha you hang the, the suprasata and the we prosciutto. Do it the way we yeah. make it. This is how we sustain yeah. ourselves. Right, exactly. And, and especially we, those old ladies. You go in those houses, you'll see a whole bunch of things hanging. They're not, they're not going out. They don't go out in the winter. My parents were yeah. farmers. I grew up like this. That's why when you ask me what I do, mm. I have tried to bring that same philosophy here in America and share the same what I'm sharing with you now. Right. Because I want for people to know that food it's either medicine or poison. Right. And not the food itself, what's behind it. The same olive oil that we press red wine, the older the better. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Extra virgin olive oil, the younger the better. What but, color is a good olive oil? The color doesn't matter. The color doesn't matter. And this is a, a misconception that everybody knows. They think a good olive oil is green, but yet I've seen good olive oils that are yellow. It doesn't so matter. It doesn't matter. It, doesn't matter. Yeah. It, all, it all depends what it goes. All right, the chef has got some incredible, um, looks like Tuscan bread here. Put yeah, some it's my old bread. Taste this. This is extra virgin olive oil from the supermarket. I'm sure you know. Yeah. Here. Light. Okay. Good viscosity. Okay. Good olive that, oil goes right through the nose. That doesn't have, this from the supermarket doesn't have any dates. We don't know nothing about it. They only say extra virgin olive oil in Italy. There's a government. Would you point. say this is true olive oil no, right here? This is poor. Okay. okay. But I don't, have to, I don't have to say it. I want right. you to say it. This thing oh, is. I, th I love it. It's good. Very good. Okay. Yeah. Now you taste this. This has a date. And the olives were pressed two weeks ago and shipped over to me for my dinners. Exclusively to me. I was the first one to have the newer all your nuovo, like the Beaujolais, mm -hmm. the wine. Right. All your nuovo. It's a big feast in Italy. The families get together, okay? All they do, they celebrate a new friend. Here, give me your... Wow, wow that's heavy. That's okay. intense. So this is the yeah, stuff. Yeah, so there's a, there's a difference. So the first one had some flavor. This one has an incredible impact that goes right through the nose. It's that is the secret to a good quality olive oil. Wow. It takes a couple of seconds, but then it'll eventually go through the nose and that's how, that is your first cold pressed okay. olive oil. We get yeah, there's a little bit of a kick. We, but we, when it's with bread, it, 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 you know, I wouldn't eat it you we, know, by itself. We make but. bread our own, but this is my own bread that I made home, right? This is called fetuta. Feta, slice, okay, garlic. Unta means greasy. It's an actual mm. dish. This is the recipe right. in the Roman. The Romans called this the God's Bite. Only for the emperors. So we eating what the emperors would eat. I love eat. it. Okay? I, yeah. I consider myself being an emperor. Okay. This is the food from the emperors. And eat it just like this. Yeah. So the chef has put all this great olive oil on this bread. I'm going oh. right down. Mm. You hear that crunch? Okay. Very nice. Ooh, okay. Oh. This is, this is uh, artichoke. Now it's the season. Following the season. Can I just mention that the bread is very good. It's sticky to the tooth. Yeah. That's the secret for yeah. good bread. Yeah. yeah. My own, my, my own bread, my own flour, my own. Okay. Mm. Now we take this, right? So if you made your own bread, you have your own olive oil. Well, everything, everything you see here, everything, everything that you see here, except for a few things. Okay, it's pretty much, this is how I do my dinners. Mm. We design menu. Who the hell wouldn't want to book this chef? I know, seriously. seriously. I mean, you're crazy if you don't think you're going to get a good meal with this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So artichokes. Artichokes, now it's in the season. Uh, we, uh, uh, so it's the season. This become one, one, the only dish, the only dish we eat for lunch. Bread, artichokes, eggs, fat, olive oil. Very good. This is how we do it. That's very good. A bon. My God. Unbelievable feast here. Bon. 
Jeff Pasquale, Martinelli, Lewis Sachs, thank you so much for having coming on the show here. Really incredible. You guys did an amazing job. The food was fantastic. Amazing. Incredible dishes, combination of olive oil with some great conversation. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.